Hey guys, from London from Red Moto. So today we're going to be doing our episode 9 of our Tundra build. And today we're going to be doing the, uh, we're going to try to test fit all the parts, put it all together, making sure it all lines up. And then we're going to start painting the parts. Uh, again, if you guys like this video, go ahead and like, subscribe, and turn on your push notification. And also hit that like button. If you guys need any pre-painted auto body parts, go to redmoto.com, your pre-painted auto body parts source. So let's get started. Alright, so we're going to start marking our holes. And so you always want to line up everything before you start painting anything because you never know that it's, you know, they say it's perfect fit but as you can see there's like gaps right here uh, It doesn't line up right here Like imperfections right here So you want to catch all that like right here also You want to catch all that before you start painting And the blue thing since we got it fixed we, got, we shot some primer on it and then the uh, blue stuff it's like a guide coat so when I start sanding it down I know whenever the blue the blue stuff comes off that it's smooth and it's even that's why you have the, uh, the blue stuff right now so I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, figure out where the holes are gonna be drilled You always want to check like each side, making sure the gaps are all correct. So like you can see right here, I think it's come down a little bit. So now I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, mark the line, mark the uh, hole that I'm gonna drill right here. Because every time I drill over there, I always try to, uh, I always hit that little uh, index hole. So you see my drill bit kind of slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, mark the holes first, and then I'll take off the uh, fender, and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill the hole that way. So right now I'm just gonna line it up. So I'm always looking at like the fitment. Making sure the lines all match up, especially like this line right here. You don't want that to be off of this line. Then yeah. Then I'm gonna make the hole a little bit bigger than uh, usual because the uh, the head of that nut is gonna fill up that hole anyway, so cover that hole. So there shouldn't be a problem if you guys drill it a little bit too big. Just don't drill it too much that the uh, the nut itself goes through the uh, fiberglass. So I'm just guesstimating where it is, where it is. So like right here. All right. Now I'm gonna take off this fender. Let's start burning this hole. So again, I'm just like like that fender right there. This middle piece right here doesn't fit correctly. So I'm not gonna drill that hole, but it's pretty secure without that hole anyways. And then this one right here too, it doesn't fit correctly. Oh well, it doesn't bother me. But that's, that's what you guys get whenever you guys do customizations like this, like the fiberglass work and all that stuff. There's always gonna be some modifications here and there. And, and absolutely, some things won't line up correctly. 
good thing about this fiberglass from fiber uh, concept, fiberglass concept, advanced fiberglass. Oh, advanced fiberglass concept. It's really thick, so I, I really like this one. It just doesn't line up very well, but it's not their fault. Fiberglass always been like that. Back on. So it fits perfectly fine. Now we're gonna try to get this grill on this place. So then that thing will go straight into those, those holes that's, because that's why it holds it right here. That's gonna be the tricky part because not, there's not a lot of clearance right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill this. I'm just gonna make this hole bigger. It's not gonna be an exact um, fitment. Well, it's gonna be exact fitment, but it's not gonna be like the correct size hole. It's just gonna be bigger. But it's better than uh, having it not fit correctly or the gas being off. Because the back of the bracket right here is gonna make this thing line up. So I'm just gonna make this bigger right here. Then I'm gonna try to line. I think this bracket is a little bit off, so I'm gonna push it this way, and then I'm gonna line up that hole right there. So to make it easy on me, I'm just gonna make this one a lot bigger. See, yeah, adjusting this this bracket right here. So I'm right right now. I'm just doing like trial and error kind of things, I'm trying to figure it out. It's uh, right there. See, it's too high, so I gotta push down on it. So I'm just, I'm just trying to adjust everything that I can, but again, I don't know if these are the right things that I'm adjusting. I think that's what's causing it. So I think right here, just making this part lift up. So I may have to cut this piece, this little bracket right here. And then, yeah, I'm gonna try to cut this bracket right here and see how that looks. I think that's what's causing me some problems. Like the last video, I mentioned that this this cooler, usually some people relocate it. I don't want to relocate mine. So I just want to 
All I need to do is shave off a little bit more and I should be good to go. Let's try to do that. One hour later. Alright. Special. No. Special. It's totally the same. I know, of course. Epic fail. Two hours later. Alright, that's it. That's the best thing to do. Wash the car and then get everything ready for uh, paint. The next day. Alright, guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and start sanding down the fender, making sure it gets ready for paint. So, usually I like to sand down wet sandpaper so it doesn't get stuck too much. You wanna do a crisscross motion? So you're not going like one direction copy more of a deep dance scratch to it. Basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to get rid of all those blue spots. And you're trying to get to this this kind of color right here. Continue on. What's the grit? It's about 400. 400 grit. But if it's a, a lot thicker, uh, it's a lot thicker primer than use a lot uh, more abrasive uh, sandpaper. But this one's not that. Okay. Prepping is the most important process in painting because if you don't uh, prep it correctly, the paint won't stick. You always want to use this kind of a uh, lock because if you just use it by hand, your hands are going to contour to the uh, well, your, your hand's not flat, so it has all these grooves. It's gonna mess up the paint, or it's not gonna be smooth. You wanna keep on looking at your work, making sure you're not going too deep in one area. Because all you try to do is try to get rid of this blue, uh, this blue color. It could be like um, any color, but usually they spray this uh, like tint to it. So you can uh, use it as a guide coat. Well, that's why it's called a guide coat. So you know exactly how far you can stand down and when to stop. Just keep on wetting it up. Right now the Texas weather is really hot. It's like around 90 something degrees. So the water is drying up pretty fast. So you want to continue. You want to continue uh, having that surface wet or the. Uh, the primer is going to start sticking to the uh, sandpaper like that. 
So I have it on the car. And now some people are wondering why you have it in the car for. Uh, it's a lot easier to stand down because it's not moving as much. So that's why I have it on the car. I'm gonna take it off later to get into these kind of crevices right here. And also sand down a little bit more on the edges right here. Like little tiny holes like that. You wanna get rid of that on your primer side. If you don't get rid of those, it's gonna show up in your paint job and your paint job's gonna look really orange peely or it's gonna start having these little dots. You gotta that's gonna mess up your paint job. So take your time in the prep. And also the one of the reasons why you wanna keep a flat uh, pad like this, see this line right here? And you guys wanna keep that line because if you guys are using your hand, you're gonna start distorting that line. You don't wanna do that. The white part you guys see right here is like basically it's called gel coat. It's like a type of a uh, Kind of like a decode, I believe. That the fender uh, is laid, uh, is sprayed onto it because the fiberglass, as you can see, like on the back of this, it's like weaves, so it's not smooth. So they put like a gel coat on it, and then that's kind of like a uh, a primer, technically, of the uh, of the fiberglass side of the uh, material. But we just lay another layer of primer on there, so you know, there's like always like little imperfections here and there. That's where we get that on there. That's how it's supposed to look like right there. All the blue stuff should be gone. And you should be left with this uh, either white or the, uh, the primer look, which is gonna be the gray look. We're gonna scuff this down once we take off the fender. But we're gonna continue on, do the same thing on this side over there. And then we're gonna scuff up the rest of the, fender, uh, rest of the body of the car. All right guys, now we're ready to paint. We've already touched up the car, ready to go for paint. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean it off. gonna walk you guys through what we've done in prep so we just pepped off the uh, taped off the hood I went ahead and taped off the doors all right so we went ahead and uh, off camera, we went ahead and painted the, painted the uh, roof. So a lot easier for us. That was, I wish I had that on camera. That was a pretty hard task since this car is so tall. Uh, the proper way to paint a car or a truck, you gotta take off that bed, okay? And right here, do the same thing. Tape off the uh, doors and then the inside of the door. Like that. We don't get any of those overspray inside the cabin. We're not painting the back of the doors or inside the uh, cabin. Because I want to leave that black. I think it's going to really make the car stand out just because of the, um, I guess the shadow from the black. It might make it a 2, 3D looking car. So, all right, next thing, I'm going to go ahead and clean the whole entire truck. Oh, actually, let me show you guys where the where the other parts are at. So we actually have two boots. I have the bumper ends right here. Those wide body fender flares or the Baja style fender flares right here. The only thing we're not painting today is anything that's a black trim. Alright, let's go ahead and start cleaning the car. So if you guys ever wonder why at different times or different cars you guys get charged more, it's probably because a small guy like me gotta use a step stool, try to clean the top part, so we gotta charge you guys a little extra. So always ask for a taller painter. That's how you get a better discount, I think. 
All you body shop owners, won't you comment down below if that's true or not? Also, what you guys didn't see uh, behind the scenes is we completely washed down the car. It's been raining for the last like um, couple weeks here, so I couldn't really show you guys how I washed it because I had to wash it like all hours. But I did wash down the whole car, that's why it's a lot easier for me to clean it. Right here, let's try to 
get the uh, back Aha style fender um, rear bedside uh, fixed up because they had a little bit of a dent on it. So we're gonna get one of my friends to fix that for us. So hopefully we get that uh, fixed this week and then paint it next week. We'll try it out. And then that bed will be all together. Uh, the bed should be ready to be installed in two weeks. We did color match the, uh, the door handles also to blue. The mirrors are color matched to the blue with the surrounding being black. But yeah man, I, I love the color. It looks fantastic. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and continue this project. I'm really excited how it's turning out. The beginning it was a very hard uh, project to do because of the, the map itself. But continuing on, I'm really excited how it turned out. So guys, go ahead and continue. Uh, turn on the push notification, hit that like button, and also uh, if you guys need any prepaid auto buying parts, go to redmotor.com and uh, watch for more videos, great content like this.